So tell me, what would happen if I walked up to your child and punched them in the nose? Or, or better yet, what would happen if someone walked up to your wife and slapped her upside the head? I think that anybody who has any brains would immediately take offense at that and would say there would definitely be a problem, probably some sort of a physical confrontation. But yet I submit to you that each day unknowingly we can be destroying our children, punching them in the nose are slapping our wives or our spouses upside the head with our words. In Proverbs, in the Bible, it says that death and life are in the power of the words. Now, that means that every word that we speak to our spouse, every word that we speak to our children, every word that we speak to the people that are around us has the potential of bringing life, or death into their into their being, into their uh, 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 soul, into their life. You say, "Well, I can't kill somebody with my words." I understand. We're not talking about a physical death, but how many times have we destroyed somebody by some offhanded comment that we've made? How many times have we destroyed our wife or our husband through a cruel word that we might have said? How many times have we destroyed our children's dreams by telling them they're not good enough, or not pretty enough, or not skinny enough, or not anything enough? I think that it happens more often than we care to admit. So my first question is, why would we ever do that? I, I, I don't know of very many people that would intentionally try to hurt their children or their spouse with their words at least while they're rationally thinking. Sometimes in the heat of the moment when we lose control, when we lose our temper, we all say things we wish we could take back. We all say things that are that are designed to hurt or are designed to destroy. The Bible says that we need to maintain our self-control. When we do that, we certainly need to apologize. But I think that sometimes we just don't think about what we're saying. We're not intentional about, about watching what we say. That's the reason why in, in Psalms, the psalmist says, Lord, I want you to help me guide, excuse me, I want you to help me guard my words. I want you to help me control what I have to say. I want you to help me to build people up, to speak life into them, to bless people rather than to curse them, to help them rather than to hurt them. Let me challenge you to do this. When you talk to your wife or your husband today, in the course of the conversation, Evaluate each sentence. Does it build them up? Does it compliment them? Is it a blessing? Or is it something that's tearing them down? Something that's destroying their spirit with your words? What about your kids? Today when they come home from school or when they come home from college or when you talk to them on the phone, Ask yourself the question, is this sentence promoting health, a blessing, into my child's life? Is this something that's lifting them up? You see, the world's going to try to tear them down. You know that, and I know that. The world's going to rob them of their dreams. The world's going to slap them in the face. But if there's one person that they ought to be able to count on, to lift them up and to encourage them, it would be their mom and their dad. You know, in Philippians chapter 4, it says, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is good, if there's anything worthy of praise, if there's anything good in the situation, think or focus on these things. What's interesting about that is that 
It doesn't mean that you're oblivious to what's bad. It doesn't mean you stick your head in the ground and just ignore what's bad. It means that you intentionally focus on the things that are good. Let me challenge you to do this. Focus on the things that are good in your spouse. Focus on the things that are good in your children. Focus on the things that are good at your job. Focus on the good in your church, in your family, in your community. And intentionally, thoughtfully, think and focus and talk about those things. Be a blessing. Be a blessing to the people that are around you. Build them up rather than tear them down. And I think that you'll find that by being a blessing, you will be blessed. Grace and peace. May you have an awesome day today. And I'll see you again sometime. Bye.